Baylor controls it after falling behind by eight in the first half. They dominate the rest of the way. Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Cole. Today we are going to be talking about the state of the Florida Gators basketball program and whether or not Mike White should be fired because this team is off to a terrible start considering what their preseason expectations were. And it's definitely gotta be frustrating to be a Florida fan right now. So make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel and follow me on Twitter for even more updates going on in the sports world. And let's get into this. So where do we begin with Florida basketball right now? This team was number six in the preseason AP poll, and they are now 12 and seven after losing this weekend to Baylor, and they just got absolutely manhandled in that game. And Baylor had complete control of the entire thing, and it's just getting frustrating watching Florida because they had such high preseason expectations coming into the season, and with how crazy college basketball has been so far, it's gotta be frustrating knowing that Florida isn't that good because, I mean, this year is so wide open, anyone can win it. And the thing that I've started to notice about Florida recently is they just kinda play soft. All the teams they've played that have uh, really beat them down have their stuff together like Florida State, Baylor, Butler and I mean Florida's upcoming schedule is very weak until late February so they have to take advantage of that because the SEC is brutal to begin with I mean upcoming they have Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, Georgia, Mississippi, Texas A&M, another game versus Vanderbilt before they have Arkansas, Kentucky, LSU, Georgia and, uh, and Kentucky to end the season so they really have to take advantage of those games right now because they've already put themselves in a pinch on if they can even make the tournament. And it's just wild to even say that because I remember coming into the season, I mean, their expectations made a lot of sense why they were so good. It's just kind of frustrating to see how things have turned out for them. Now, either the Gators were widely overrated in the preseason or they've widely underperformed in the regular season. I mean, that's kind of up to speculate. I would say that they've just underperformed. I mean, they had a lot of talent coming into the season, which I'll get into in a minute, uh, more than like they were overrated because, I mean, there's a lot of teams that are dominating college basketball right now that were not projected to be very good. For example, like San Diego State. I mean, that's why it's just gotta be kind of frustrating right now. Now, Mike, White suggested his team was a little bit immature and undisciplined and soft, which makes sense. They're a pretty young team. Uh, Kerry Blackshear, who came in, he's a senior this year. I mean, he was the most sought after transfer on the market from Virginia Tech. And they also have more talent with Scotty Lewis, who was a five star, and Trey Mann, who was a four star. But watching Florida this year, I mean, this was my scouting report. I kind of hated how they didn't move the ball very well on offense. They couldn't make outside shots. They had no perimeter shooting at all. And they really relied on Carey way too much early to begin the season. And they didn't really play good defense, which is something that I kind of would have expected because that's what Mike White's teams have usually done. Uh, they don't shoot the three very well. They did defend and they had a lot of potential. Uh, but, and, you know, I thought that if they could get some good wins in conference, things would start to get better. But I mean, really their only good win in conference right now is versus Auburn. And they have some embarrassing losses to especially to Missouri and they almost lost to Alabama in double overtime but Alabama's gotten a lot better now they had a good starting lineup on paper Andrew Nimhard, Noah Locke, Scotty Lewis, Keontae Johnson, Kerry Blackshear, Omar Payne, Trey Mann but they really just stuck uh sucked at offense to begin the year and they and moving the ball was a problem and definitely scoring and I watched them versus Providence and the thing that I think that the reason they beat Providence so well was because Providence kind of has the same issues as Florida and Florida just really dominated down low and I I thought that that was actually a big turning point for them because they were coming off uh, winning a, a tournament and they beat St. Joe's, Miami, and Xavier. And things were starting to look better after their embarrassing start when they lost to Florida State in their second game. And then they lost to UConn in their fourth game. So I thought things were starting to click and then they went out and lost to Butler. And then they lost to Utah State. And right smack dab in the middle of that one was their win versus Providence. So, I mean, they still haven't really turned the corner yet. I don't know if they're going to. It's kind of getting frustrating. I mean, a lot of teams in college basketball are kind of sucking right now that had high uh, preseason expectations. It's funny because like the teams that had low preseason expectations are the ones that are dominating like Dayton and Baylor. And then the teams that you know, everybody thought would be very good, uh, they're just not very good right now. Like a Kentucky, I mean, Kentucky's getting better, but I mean, they had high preseason expectations. Michigan State was in the preseason number one and they've kind of slipped up a little bit, but I think that they're getting a lot better. But Florida's the one team that I don't think's improving very well, which is concerning. Now the team is littered with sophomores and freshmen and they are one of the least experienced teams in the nation, but that's near Kentucky, Duke, Wichita State, and Villanova in experience that I checked on Kempom, like teams that were around them, because right now they rank 343 which is, I mean, almost dead last in division one. So I think that that's, that's why it's a little bit concerning because I mean, those teams have really good head coaches with Cal Perry, Shisechi, uh, Greg Marshall and Jay Wright. That's where I think Mike White might be lacking. And I think that's where Florida fans have a point. Cause I do see a lot of Florida fans kind of hating on Mike White right now, which I mean, it makes sense. Cause Florida's definitely not the same program they were under Billy Donovan. 
and their Ken Palm efficiency ratings on defense and offense. On offense, they're 24 in Ken Palm, and then on defense, they're 67. So, I mean, their numbers are not in the dark green that you'd want to see. So, like everywhere else, they're kind of average. And Mike White has been there since 2016, and the Gators went 21 15 and won two games in the NIT then. But, I mean, that was kind of expected because the year before that, with Billy Donovan, they went 16 and 17. And, you know, that was Billy's last year, and he lost his entire team from the Final Four from 2014. So, it makes sense that Florida was not very good that year. And then 2017, they went 27 and nine, which was a huge step up. And you know, I think things were starting to look really good right then. And they went to the Elite Eight, they beat East Tennessee, they beat Virginia, uh, and then they beat Wisconsin on a buzzer beater before falling to South Carolina. So I thought that was like the big turning point for them. And then 2018, they went 21 and 13. So they fell back a little bit. They didn't, they definitely didn't get as many wins, uh, but they beat St. Bonaventure in their first game in the NCAA tournament, but then lost to Texas Tech in the round of 32. Now that was a close game. Texas Tech went to the Elite Eight. So, I mean, Mike White has done a pretty decent job. And then 2019, they went 20 and 16, but, and they beat Nevada, which Nevada was a really good team uh, in the preseason as well. But they didn't really kind of live up to the expectations they had and but then they lost to michigan so i think the thing that's kind of concerning florida fans isn't like the postseason success i think it has more to do with the regular season success because each year they've definitely drastically gone down the number of games they've won from at least in, we're not going to include 2016 because that was an out i mean what can you do with that year but 2017 they won 27 then 2018 they won 21 and then 2019 which was last year they won 20. so that's concerning uh I, you know they keep losing more during the regular season like i said but you know what to start out the preseason this year with their expectations i mean everybody else in the preseason top 10 is still relatively right there except for north carolina and virginia was number 11 i'm pretty sure so i mean but those teams lacked a lot of talent overall and florida has that talent so that's why i think this has to do with coaching more than i mean really anything else i mean it's just weird because they're, they're just not producing as much they're not defending which is really frustrating uh in sec so far they barely beat alabama and then they lost to missouri which was embarrassing lost but they have beat south carolina and mississippi the, you know they're not like as good of a win as auburn is but i think that was more of an outlier that Auburn win uh but then after that Auburn win they lost to LSU and then they lost to Baylor so I mean their offense is getting better but it's their defense that's just kind of non-existent like versus LSU they let up 84 versus for Missouri they let up 91 and then versus Alabama in a game they won they let up 98 and then they just got beat up by a very tough Baylor team so like I think that's why it's a little bit frustrating is again the defense is just not there now the good news is they're still a talented team they can still get good wins in conference and they have time to improve. And honestly, they have a pretty good schedule coming up, so they can definitely win a good amount of those games. Uh, and you know, a lot of fans are kind of turning on Mike White. Makes sense. I mean, the team is just not the same as it was when he got there. And it definitely isn't the same when Billy was there. It's just interesting to see what's going to happen soon. I don't think they're going to fire Mike White after this season, uh, especially if a lot of the players return, which most doubtably they will because they haven't really shown anything that makes them look like a good NBA prospect so far especially some of the freshmen like Scotty Lewis or Trey Mann. So, I mean, like, I don't know what Florida's going to do after this year. Obviously, they're going to lose Blackshear, but, I mean, everybody else can return. So, if they can make a lot of progress next year, which is definitely frustrating to say that, then Mike White will probably not get fired. And the thing is, is that now Billy Donovan is doing uh, really well with the Oklahoma City Thunder and considering their talent level and they're doing really good this year. So, I doubt that he gets fired. Now, somebody that probably would get looked at if they wanted to hire somebody would be Anthony Grant who was at Florida a long time ago with Billy Donovan. So, I mean, like, that's a name to look at. But I just doubt that they fire Mike White after this year. I mean, that'd be very shocking. A lot of people hate Mike White, understandably so, especially if you're a big Donovan fan. But a lot of people love Mike White right now because he's young, he's energetic, and you know what? He can grow into this job the older he gets. I mean, I don't know what Florida's going to do, obviously, because I'm not there. But the seat is definitely warm, and it's only going to get warmer if Florida keeps lowering the ceiling than what it already is right now because they've definitely underperformed this year. And if Mike White lasts till next year and they underperform again, and then the seat's gonna be on fire. So click here for my video about Dayton basketball and why I think they're more than just a Final Four contender this year. And you can learn a little bit more about Anthony Grant because he might be a uh, Florida coaching name coming up soon. And uh, click next to that for another video about Memphis basketball that I made right before James Wiseman left. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I will see you in the next upload and on Twitter.